Now we're going to step back and we're going to focus just on the kinetics of step growth polymerizations. And it, in this case, we're going to focus on polyesterifications. We have to make an assumption before we even get started, okay? It's a key assumption that was originally proposed by Paul Flory, one of the founders of modern polymer science and engineering. He stated that reactivity of a functional group is independent to the, of the length of the chain. In other words, reactivity is independent of chain length. And this is crucial because um, if the reactivity slowed as the chain got longer, we would never get to high molecular weight polymers because the reaction would just slow down and slow down. And that's initially what, what, back in the 30s, that's what was believed. And that's why they didn't think that you could have macromolecules. But we know that's wrong. And this is a crucial and valid assumption. Okay, we're gonna look at some data on the next slide. So it doesn't matter if the diacid is huge or a monomer. It, reactivity is independent of chain length. So let's look at this plot. Is Flory right? Take a few seconds and look at it. Okay, so Flory, this, this, this is um, real data from the 1950s that Flory published. And it's really quite amazing how little variation there is from trimers on. The rate constant of an esterification just doesn't change if, once you get past monomers and dimers. So reactivity is independent of chain length, except for monomers and dimers, okay? So that's a really good assumption. And that's important because now we need one rate law as opposed to a rate law for every length of chain. So we're gonna start with an uncatalyzed polymerization. We have a diacid, AA, reacting with a diol, BB, to make that polyester, okay? So you might think that the reaction rate, if we're looking at the decrease in acid concentration as a function of time, would be proportional to the acid concentration times the alcohol concentration. Makes sense? That's not the case for an un uncatalyzed polymerization. This is why rate laws always have to be experimentally verified. In this case, an uncatalyzed polymerization, the rate of decrease of acid groups with respect to time, the polymerization rate, is equal to the rate constant times the concentration of acid groups squared times the concentration of alcohol groups. Okay, that's an experimentally verified rate law. Now, we're gonna to get to our second key assumption. And if we don't remember to do this step, we cannot solve this rate law. So, because the acid concentration and the alcohol concentration to get the highest molecular weight polymers has to be exactly equal, right? So we know that at t equals zero, when we start, the, number of the concentration of acid groups has to equal the concentration of alcohol groups. Now, every time I react an acid group, I react an alcohol, right? So as a function of time, these concentrations also stay the same. So we can now set the concentration of acid groups equal to the concentration of alcohol groups. So we just use the letter C, okay? So we go from our rate law that I don't know how to separate the variables and integrate, the one on the left, to the one on the right, which I can readily separate the variables and integrate. And we will do this um, on the document camera, okay? So we'll slow down and do this. But we're gonna take that bottom equation and, and look at it and, and plot it. Now, I said we were gonna plot it, but we're gonna, instead of using concentration, we're gonna use extent of reaction. You don't have to, but by convention, this is the way polymer scientists have done it. And so we need to remember, what is the extent of reaction? It's been a while since we talked about it, but we can define it either in terms of alcohol groups or acid groups. So let's just use the acid groups. 
So it's the number of, of acid groups reacted divided by the number of acid groups at t equals zero, the number we originally had. Okay, so the extent of reaction. So one minus P is the fraction of unreacted groups. Okay, stop and think about that because it's confusing to you. So our concentration just equals our initial concentration times one minus P because that's the fraction of unreacted groups. We can take the equation from the last slide, plug in for concentration, and we get the, the, the bottom uh, equation here. And that's what we're gonna plot. We're gonna plot one over one minus P squared versus time, okay? One over one minus P squared versus time. It's very linear, except at really short times, very linear. That means our assumptions are valid. Now, why is it not linear at very short times? Think about that. Hopefully, you remembered that the reactivity, we, ha we have assumed that reactivity is independent of chain length. And it's a great assumption, except for monomers and dimers. They react a little bit faster. So that's why we see this deviation to, the faster, to a faster rate at very short times. Now let's look at catalyzed polymerizations. This is, they're using an acid catalyst generally. So the new rate law is no longer dependent on the concentration of acid groups squared. The rate of decrease of acid with respect to time now equals the rate constant times the concentration of acid groups times the concentration of alcohol groups. There's our new rate law. Now, we have to do our key step to do anything with this rate law. We need to remember that the concentration of acid groups equals the concentration of alcohol groups at t equals zero and at every, every point in time throughout the reaction. So we can set those equal I set them equal to, to C for concentration. Now you can take that simplified rate law, separate the variables and integrate, get an expression for concentration as a function of time for the reaction, and then you can plug in um, the extent of reaction, just like we did on the last one, and we get the final equation on this, on this slide. And you can, if you look carefully, you can see if I plot 1 over 1 minus p versus time, I should get a straight line. And we do, if you take a look at the plot right there. So now it's 1 over 1 minus p, not 1 over 1 minus p squared. That squared dependence has gone away. And we get a wonderfully linear plot, again, except for very, very short times where we have a lot of monomer and dimer. Okay. So. Again, we will look at this um, on the document camera and, and talk about the steps in more detail. So there's our catalyzed polyesterifications. Now, I just want to remind you, you might be thinking 1 over 1 minus p is familiar, right? Hopefully you remember that the number average degree of polymerization for step growth polymerizations number average degree of polymerizations, degree of polymerization equals one over one minus P, okay? And we, we derived that expression earlier in this semester. So if you don't remember, go back and, and take a look in that um, molecular weight and comparison of stain, step and chain growth um, polymerizations. Okay. So if we, if we take a look at the plot of one over one minus P versus conversion or extent of reaction, we, we see this. And we've looked at this earlier in the semester, but it's good to remember. So we do not get high molecular weight or high degrees of polymerizations until very high extent of reactions for step growth polymers. We have to really push these reactions to get high uh, molecular weight or high degrees of polymerization.